A Naval Flight Officer is a commissioned officer in the United States Navy or United States Marine Corps who specializes in airborne weapons and sensor systems. NFOs are not pilots naval aviators per se, but they may perform many co-pilot functions, depending on the type of aircraft. Until 1966, their duties were performed by both commissioned officer and senior enlisted naval aviation observers In 1966, enlisted personnel were removed from naval aviation observer duties but continued to serve in enlisted aircrew roles, while NAO officers received the newly established NFO designation, and the NFO insignia was introduced. NFOs in the U.S. Navy all begin their careers as unrestricted line officers URL, eligible for command at sea and ashore in the various naval aviation aircraft type, model, series T, M, S communities and, at a senior level, in command of carrier air wings and aircraft carriers afloat and functional air wings, naval air stations and other activities ashore. They are also eligible for promotion to senior flag rank positions, including command of aircraft carrier strike groups, expeditionary strike groups, joint task forces, numbered fleets, naval component commands and unified combatant commands. A small number of U.S. Navy NFOs have later opted for a lateral transfer to the Restricted Line RL as Aeronautical Engineering Duty Officers AEDO, while continuing to retain their NFO designation and active flight status. Such officers are typically graduates of the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School and or the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School with advanced academic degrees in aerospace engineering or similar disciplines. AEDO – NFOs are eligible to command test and evaluation squadrons, naval air test centers, naval air warfare centers, and hold major program management responsibilities within the Naval Air Systems Command Similarly, Marine Corps NFOs are also considered eligible for command at sea and ashore within marine aviation, and are also eligible to hold senior general officer positions, such as command of Marine Aircraft Wings, Marine Air Ground Task Forces MAGTFs, Joint Task Forces, Marine Expeditionary Forces, Marine Corps Component Commands and Unified Combatant Commands. The counterpart to the NFO in the United States Air Force is the Combat Systems Officer CSO, encompassing the previous roles of Navigator, Weapon Systems Officer and Electronic Warfare Officer. Although NFOs in the Navy's E-2 Hawkeye aircraft perform functions similar to the USAF Air Battle Manager in the E-3 Sentry AWACS aircraft, their NFO training track is more closely aligned with that of USAF Combat Systems Officers. The United States Coast Guard had a short-lived NFO community in the 1980s and 1990s when it temporarily operated E-2 Sea Hawkeye aircraft on loan from the Navy. Following a fatal mishap with one of these aircraft at the former naval station Roosevelt Roads, Puerto Rico, the Coast Guard returned the remaining E-2Cs to the Navy and disestablished its NFO program. Training Topic <inaudible> Overview Training for student NFOs SNFOs starts out the same as for student naval aviators SNAs with the same academic requirements and nearly identical physical requirements the only real distinction is in physical requirements, where SNFOs may have less than 20-20 uncorrected distant vision. Both SNAs and SNFOs go through the same introductory flight screening and aviation preflight indoctrination together before splitting off into their respective primary training squadrons. The SNFO program has continued to evolve since the 1960s. Today, SNFOs train under the Undergraduate Military Flight Officer UMFO program at Training Air Wing 6, -wing 6 at NAS Pensacola, alongside foreign students from various NATO, Allied and Coalition navies and air forces. All student NFOs begin primary training at Training Squadron 10 VT10, flying the T6A Texan II trainer, eventually moving on to advanced training at Training Squadron 4 VT4 or Training Squadron 86 VT86. Upon graduation from their respective advanced squadron, students receive their wings of gold 
and are aeronautically designated as naval flight officers. After winging, students conduct follow-on training at their respective Fleet Replacement Squadron FRS. Topic: <laughs> NFO Training Squadrons. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Introductory Flight Screening. All SNFOs and SNAs start their aviation training with Introductory Flight Screening IFS. IFS consists of two phases, ground school and flight training. The ground school portion lasts about two weeks and culminates with the student completing the FAA private pilot exam. Afterwards, every student enrolls in one of several civilian flight schools located near NARS Pensacola. Students complete approximately 14 hours of flight training in a single-engine aircraft, including a solo flight. IFS is normally waived for students entering training with a private pilot license. Aviation pre-flight indoctrination SNFOs will train with Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard SNAs along with NATO and Allied students in the SNA and SNFO tracks, and, periodically, with student naval flight surgeons. Aviation Preflight Indoctrination consists of academic instruction, hands-on interaction and aviation physiology, water survival, and land survival skills. The academic topics taught in API are of the following Aerodynamics Aircraft engines and systems Weather Air navigation Flight rules and regulations After the academic phase, students will complete Aerospace physiology Egress training Water survival training Land survival training Topic. Primary 1 After completing API, all SNFOs report to VT-10 under training Air Wing 6 to begin Primary 1 training. All training in VT-10 is done in the Beechcraft T-6A Texan II and consists of three phases all phases consist of ground school, simulator events, and flight events. Contact phase aircraft systems, emergency procedures, basic communication, takeoff, landing, ELPs, spins, precision aerobatics, course rules. Instrument phase instrument flight procedures, flight planning, voice communication. Visual navigation phase visual flight procedures, tactical route construction, precision aerobatics. After graduating from primary one, SNFOs will select between maritime land based aviation or tailhook carrier aviation. Students selected for land based platforms, e.g., P 3 Orion, P 8 Poseidon, E P 3 Ares II, E 6 Mercury, will continue on to the Advanced Maritime Command and Control curriculum at VT 4. Those that select carrier aviation will continue to primary 2 training and remain at VT-10. Topic: <inaudible> Primary 2. Primary 2 training is also done through VT-10. It is a much shorter syllabus and consists of two phases. Instrument phase simulators and flights flown at a faster airspeed and used to bolster instrument procedures. Formation phase ground school and flights used to introduce formation flying, tactical maneuvers, parade sequence, etc. After graduating from primary 2, SNFOs will select E2C D Hawk I Strike Jet Aircraft 2C, D Hawk I selectees will continue on to the Advanced Maritime Command and Control curriculum at VT 4, while Jet selectees will continue to intermediate training and remain at VT 10. Intermediate SNFOs destined for carrier-based strike fighter and electronic attack aircraft remain in VT-10 and continue to fly in the T-6A Texan II. Training consists of four phases Single ship instrument phase building upon instrument procedures in primary 1 and 2, VFR pattern, GPS navigation 
section instrument phase instrument flying in formation tactical formation phase rendezvous tactical formation tail chase section visual navigation phase visual navigation flying in formation topic advanced maritime command and control After primary, students who have selected E-2s or land-based maritime aviation P3, P8, EP3, E6 check into VT4 for Advanced Maritime Command and Control training. The MC2 program was developed to allow SNFOs to receive advanced platform-specific training while still at NARS Pensacola, and to receive their wings before progressing to their respective Fleet Replacement Squadron for training in their ultimate operational combat aircraft. All MC2 training is conducted in the Multi-Crew Simulator MCS, a new simulator system that allows students to train independently, as a single ship crew, or as a multi-ship mission. MC2 training has two phases, core and strand. Topic: <coughs> Core. SNFOs begin MC2 training in the core syllabus. These classes include a combination of SNFOs who are E2C D selectees and land-based maritime selectees. Training in this phase builds upon the instrument training from primary and includes Operational flight planning, instruments, and navigation international flight rules and TACAN navigation Communications and navigation systems COM systems and INS, GPS, and radar theory and navigation Sensor and link operations radar, IFF, and IR theory and data link employment Fleet Operationship On completion of core training, SNFOs who progressed to MC2 training from Primary 1 land-based maritime selectees will select their fleet platform. Their choices are, E6B Mercury, P3C Orion, EP3E Ares II, and P8A Poseidon. When platform selection is complete, all SNFOs remain at VT4 for strand training. Topic. Strand Strand training is platform-specific training in VT-4 via the MCS, allowing SNFOs destined for the carrier-based E-2 community or the land-based P-3, P-8, EP-3 and E-6 communities to begin learning their responsibilities on their fleet aircraft. The development of this program relieves the associated fleet replacement squadrons from teaching SNFOs the basics of naval aviation and to focus more on advanced fleet tactics, thus providing the fleet with mission-capable NFOs. Upon completion of strand training, students receive their «wings of gold» and are aeronautically designated as naval flight officers. SNFOs progress through one or two of four strands, depending on what platform they select, E2C, E2D Maritime Patrol and Reconnaissance MPR, P3C, EP3E, and P8A Selectees E6B Common Navigation, a prerequisite strand for MPR and E6 strands. The E2 strand consists of Airborne Early Warning E2 Capabilities and Mission Overview Air Intercept Control Airborne Battlefield Command and Control, Tactics, and Strike Techniques The Common Navigation Strand consists of Publications and Charts Overwater Navigation and Communication Procedures Navigation Logs The MPR Strand consists of Surface Search and Littoral Surveillance Community Overview, Target Identification, Sensor Employment Electronic Warfare and Acoustic Operations U Introduction, Sonar Theory Maritime Patrol and Reconnaissance Coordinated Operations The E6 strand consists of Communications and Operations Community Overview, Operations, Strategic Command Structure Topic. Advanced Strike SNFOs report to VT-86 and fly the T-45C Goshawk. Training consists of five phases 
Contact phase T45 systems, emergency procedures, carrier operations, night operations, communications. Strike phase air to ground radar, low level flying, mission planning, fuel awareness. Close air support phase CA's procedures and communications. Basic fighter maneuver phase BFM practice. All weather intercepts phase air to air radar, air intercepts, GPS. After graduating from advanced strike training, Navy SNFOs will select EA 18G Growler. F A 18F Super Hornet Marine SNFOs will select F A 18D Hornet. Topic Naval Aviator vs Naval Flight Officer Naval Flight Officers operate some of the advanced systems on board most multi-crew naval aircraft, and some may also act as the overall tactical mission commanders of single or multiple aircraft assets during a given mission. NFOs are not formally trained to pilot the aircraft, although they do train in some dual control aircraft and are given the opportunity to practice hands-on controls basic airmanship techniques. Some current and recently retired naval aircraft with side-by-side -side seating are also authorized to operate under dual piloted weather minimums with one pilot and one NFO. However, in the unlikely event that the pilot of a single piloted naval aircraft becomes incapacitated, the crew would likely eject or bail out, if possible, as NFOs are not normally qualified to land the aircraft, especially in the carrier-based shipboard environment. NFOs serve as Weapon Systems Officers WSOs, Electronic Warfare Officers EWO, Electronic Countermeasures Officers ECMO, Tactical Coordinators TACCO, Bombardiers, and Navigators. They can serve as Aircraft Mission Commanders, although in accordance with the OPNAVINST 3710 series of instructions, the pilot in command, regardless of rank, is always responsible for the safe piloting of the aircraft. Many NFOs achieve flight, section lead, division lead, package lead, mission lead and mission commander qualification, even when the pilot of the aircraft does not have that designation. Often, a senior NFO is paired with a junior pilot and vice versa. NFO astronauts have also flown aboard the Space Shuttle and the International Space Station as mission specialists and wear NFO astronaut wings. Like their naval aviator counterparts, NFOs in both the Navy and Marine Corps have commanded aviation squadrons, carrier air wings, shore-based functional air wings and air groups, marine aircraft groups, air facilities, air stations, aircraft carriers, amphibious assault ships, carrier strike groups, expeditionary strike groups, marine aircraft wings, marine expeditionary forces, numbered fleets, and component commands of unified combatant commands. Three NFOs have reached four-star rank, one as a Marine Corps general having served as the Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, and the other two as Navy Admirals, one having served as Vice Chief of Naval Operations before commanding U.S. Fleet Forces Command and U.S. Atlantic Fleet, U.S. Pacific Command and U.S. Central Command and the other having commanded U.S. Pacific Command, having previously commanded U.S. Pacific Fleet. Another former NFO who re-trained and qualified as a naval aviator also achieved four-star rank as a Marine Corps general, commanded U.S. Strategic Command and later served as Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff In some quarters, NFO careers may be viewed more restrictive than their naval aviator counterparts. For example, NFOs only serve aboard multi-crew naval aircraft and as certain multi-crew aircraft are retired from the active inventory, NFOs can become displaced, as happened with the withdrawal of the A6, EA6B, F4, F14 and S3 from active service. In addition, as avionics have become more advanced, the need for some multi-crew aircraft using one or more NFOs has been reduced. However, the majority of NFOs as well as naval aviators from aircraft being retired have historically been afforded the opportunity to transition to another aircraft platform, such as F-4 and F-14 transitions to the F-A-18D and F-A-18F, A-6 transitions to the EA-6B and S-3, S-3 transitions to the P-3, P-8, E-2 and F-A-18F, and EA-6B transitions to the EA-18G. 
Although it is true that naval aviators can also transition their piloting expertise into civilian careers as commercial airline pilots and that NFOs are not able to similarly translate their skills into this career field unless augmented by associated FAA pilot certificates, the military aviation career opportunities of NFOs remain on par with their naval aviator counterparts, as do their post-military career prospects in the civilian sector in defense, aviation and aerospace, as well as other career pursuits beyond that of commercial airline pilot. Notable NFOs Vice Admiral Walter E. Ted Carter Jr. became the 62nd Superintendent of the U.S. Naval Academy on July 23, 2014. He graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1981, was designated a Naval Flight Officer in 1982, and graduated from the U.S. Navy Fighter Weapons School in 1985. Carter's career as an aviator includes extensive time at sea, deploying around the globe in the F-4 Phantom II and the F-14 Tomcat. He has landed on 19 different aircraft carriers, to include all 10 of the Nimitz class carriers. Carter flew 125 combat missions in support of joint operations in Bosnia, Kosovo, Kuwait, Iraq and Afghanistan. He accumulated 6,150 flight hours in F-4, F-14, and F-A-18 aircraft during his career and safely completed 2016 carrier arrested landings, the record among all active and retired U.S. Naval Aviation designators. As a captain, Vice Admiral Richard Dunleavy was the first NFO to command an aircraft carrier, the USS Coral Sea CV-43. He previously flew the A-3 Skywarrior, A-5 Vigilante, RA-5C Vigilante and A-6 Intruder. Later in his career, he was promoted to Rear Admiral and Vice Admiral, and was the first NFO to hold the since disestablished position of Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Air Warfare He retired in 1993. Commander William P. Driscoll was the first NFO to become a flying ace, having achieved five aerial kills of VPAF fighter aircraft during the Vietnam War. Driscoll received the service's second highest decoration, the Navy Cross, for his role in a 1972 dogfight with North Vietnamese MiGs. Driscoll separated from active duty in 1982, but remained in the United States Naval Reserve, flying the F-4 Phantom II and later the F-14 Tomcat in a Naval Air Reserve fighter squadron at Nas Miramar, eventually retiring in 2003 with the rank of Commander 05. Admiral William Fallon, an NFO who flew in the RA-5C Vigilante and the A-6 Intruder, was the first NFO to achieve four-star rank. As a three-star vice admiral, he was the first NFO to command a numbered fleet, the U.S. Second Fleet. He later served in four separate four-star assignments, to include command of two unified combatant commands. This included service as the 31st Vice Chief of Naval Operations from October 2000 to August 2003, the Commander, U.S. Fleet Forces Command and U.S. Atlantic Fleet from October 2003 to February 2005, Commander, U.S. Pacific Command from February 2005 until March 2007, and Commander, U.S. Central Command from March 2007 until his retirement in in March 2008, Captain Dale Gardner was the first NFO to qualify and fly as a NASA mission specialist astronaut aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger on mission STS-8. He previously flew the F-14 Tomcat. He retired in 1990. Rear Admiral Benjamin Thurman Hacker was the first NFO flag officer, having been selected in 1980. He previously flew the P-2 Neptune and P-3 Orion. He retired in 1988. Admiral Harry B. Harris, Jr., was the last commander, U.S. Pacific Command prior to its redesignation as U.S. Indo-Pacific Command He was the first NFO from the land-based Maritime Patrol Aviation Community to command a numbered fleet, the U.S. Sixth Fleet, and later commanded the U.S. Pacific Fleet. He is also the first member of the Navy's land-based Maritime Patrol Aviation Community, pilot or NFO, to promote to four-star rank. 
He previously flew the P-3C Orion. He retired in 2018. Vice Admiral David C. Nichols was the Deputy Coalition Air Forces Component Commander Deputy CFACC during Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom. He was the first NFO to command the Naval Strike and Air Warfare Center, the second NFO to command a numbered fleet, the U.S. Fifth Fleet, and was later Deputy Commander of U.S. Central Command. He previously flew the A-6 Intruder. He retired in 2007. General William L. Nyland, USMC was the first Marine Corps NFO to achieve four-star rank as Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps. As a Lieutenant General, he was also the first NFO to serve as Deputy Commandant for Aviation. He previously flew the F-4 Phantom II and the F-A-18 Hornet. He retired in 2005. Lieutenant General Terry G. Robling, USMC was the first Marine Corps NFO to command United States Marine Corps Forces, Pacific following an assignment as the Deputy Commandant for Aviation. He previously flew the F-4 Phantom II and the F-A-18 Hornet. He retired in 2014. Vice Admiral Nora W. Tyson was the commander, United States Third Fleet from 2015 to 2017, and previously Deputy Commander, U.S. Fleet Forces Command. She was the first female NFO to command a warship, the amphibious assault ship USS Bataan LHD-5, and the first female naval officer to command an aircraft carrier strike group, Carrier Strike Group 2, aboard the USS George H. W. Bush CVN-77. She previously flew the land-based EC-130Q Hercules and the E-6 Mercury TACAMO aircraft. She was the first woman to command a U.S. Navy fleet, the U.S. Third Fleet. She retired in 2017. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Fleet. Eligible fleet platforms for NFOs are as of December 2017 are as follows: E-2C D Hawkeye, F-A-18F Super Hornet. F-A-18D Hornet USMC only EA-18G Growler EP-3E Ares II P-3C Orion P-8A Poseidon E-6B Mercury and the EA-18G Growler, NFOs are designated as Electronic Warfare Officers and may also be Mission Commanders in the E-2C Hawkeye and E-2D Advanced Hawkeye, NFOs are initially as designated Radar Officers then upgrade to Air Control Officers and finally to Combat Information Center Officers and CICO, Mission Commanders In the E-6B Mercury, NFOs are initially designated as Airborne Communications Officers ACOs, then upgrade to Combat Systems Officers CSOs, and finally to Mission Commanders CSO per megacoulomb. In the EP-3E Ares, NFOs are initially designated as Navigators NAV and eventually upgrade to Electronic Warfare Officer, Signals Evaluator and EWO-SEVAL, Mission Commander SEVAL per megacoulomb. In the F.A-18F Super Hornet and F.A-18D Hornet, the NFO position is known as the Weapon Systems Officer WSO and may also be Mission Commander qualified. In the P-3C Orion and P-8A Poseidon, the NFO is initially designated as a Navigator, Communicator NAV, COM, and eventually upgrades to Tactical Coordinator TACCO and then TACCO, Mission Commander TACCO per megacoulomb. A single USN or USMC NFO is assigned to the United States Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels, as Blue Angel No. 8, the events coordinator. This is an operational flying billet for this officer and he or she flies the twin-seat F.A-18D Blue Angel 7 aircraft which replaced the F.A-18B previously used with the team's advance pilot, narrator. They function as the Advanced Liaison ADVON at all air show sites and the events coordinator provides backup support to the narrator during all aerial demonstrations. 
NFOs have also served as instructors in the twin-seat F-5F Tiger II at the Navy Fighter Weapons School now part of the Naval Aviation Warfighting Development Center and as instructors in twin-seat F.A-18Bs in USN and USMCF, A-18 Fleet Replacement Squadrons and the Navy Fighter Weapons School. They have also flown a number of USAF and NATO, Allied aircraft via the U.S. Navy's Personnel Exchange Program PEP, to include, but not limited to, the USAF F-4 Phantom II, F-15E Strike Eagle and E-3 Sentry, the Royal Air Force Buccaneer S.2, Tornado GR-1, GR-1B, GR-4, GR-4A and Nimrod Mr. II, and the Royal Canadian Air Force CP-140 Aurora. In all, the specific roles filled by an NFO can vary greatly depending on the type of aircraft and squadron to which an NFO is assigned. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Past aircraft. NFOs also flew in these retired aircraft, including as mission commander EA-1F, formerly AD-5Q, Skyrider serving as electronic warfare officer, electronic countermeasures operator. A-3, formerly A-3D, Skywarrior, e.g. A-3B, EA-3B, ERA-3B, EKA-3B, TA-3B and VA-3B, serving as bombardier, navigator, navigator, electronic countermeasures, electronic warfare officer and EWO signals evaluator. A-4 Skyhawk as students in the TA-4J, as TOPGUN adversary instructors in the TA-4F and TA-4J, as forward air controllers in the OA-4M USMC only, and as electronic warfare officers in the EA-4F. A-5A formerly A-3J-1, A-5B formerly A-3J-2 and RA-5C formerly A-3J-3P vigilante serving as bombardier, navigator in the A-5A and A-5B and reconnaissance, attack navigator in the RA-5C. A-6 intruder e.g., A-6A, A-6B, A-6C, Ka-6D, A-6E serving as bombardier, navigator USN plus USMC. EA-6A Prowler serving as Electronic Countermeasures Officer USN plus USMC. EA-6B Prowler serving as Electronic Countermeasures Officer USN plus USMC. EA-7L Corsair II as Electronic Countermeasures Officer. C-130F Hercules serving as Navigator. EC-130Q Hercules. TACAMO. Aircraft serving as navigator and airborne communications officer. LC-130 Hercules serving as navigator. E-1B formerly WF-2 tracer serving as radar intercept controllers. EC-121 formerly West Virginia-2 and West Virginia-3 warning star as navigator and electronic warfare officer. F-10, formerly F-3D-2Q, Sky Knight as Electronic Warfare Officer, USMC only. F-4 Phantom II, e.g. F-4B, F-4J, F-4N, F-4S, EF-4B, EF-4J, serving as Radar Intercept Officer, USN plus USMC. EF-4B and EF-4J Phantom II serving as Electronic Warfare Officer. RF-4B Phantom II serving as Reconnaissance Systems Officer USMC only. F-14 Tomcat e.g., F-14A, F-14B, F-14D serving as Radar Intercept Officer. OV-10 Bronco OV-10A, OV-10D, OV-10D+, OV-10G serving as Aerial Observer and Forward Air Controller USMC only. SP2E H, formerly P2V5 and P2V7, Neptune, e.g. SP2E, SP2H, EP2E, OP2E, AP2H, LP2H, serving as tactical coordinator and navigator. SP5B, formerly P5M, Marlin, serving as tactical coordinator and navigator. RP3A and RP3D Orion, serving as ocean project coordinator and navigator. 
S3 Viking S3A and S3B serving as tactical coordinator TACCO and co-pilot tactical coordinator COTAC ES3A Shadow serving as electronic warfare officer and co-pilot electronic warfare officer WP3A Orion serving as navigator RP3A and RP3D Orion serving as navigator and ocean projects coordinator EP3J Orion serving as navigator and electronic warfare officer P3A, P3B and P3B TACNAVMOD Orion serving as tactical coordinator and navigator. NFOs have also served as instructors, mission commanders in since retired training aircraft such as the UC 45 Expediter, T 29 Flying Classroom, several variants of the T 39 Sabreliner, the TC 4C Academe, T 47A Citation II, and the USAF T 43A Bobcat. Popular culture One of key characters in the popular film Top Gun was LTJG Nick Goose Bradshaw, played by Anthony Edwards, an F-14 radar intercept officer teamed with his pilot, LT Pete Maverick Mitchell, played by Tom Cruise. Several others were LTJG Ron Slider Kerner, Rio to LT Tom Iceman. Kazansky, LT Sam, Merlin, Niels, LT Bill, Cougar, Cortles Rio, and LT JG Leonard, Wolfman, Wolf, LT Rick, Hollywood, Nevins Rio, LT JG Marcus, Sundown, Williams, played by Clarence Gilliard Jr., is the Rio of LT JG Charles, Chipper. Piper played by Adrian Pazda and served as Maverick's Rio right after the latter went back to operational flight status following the accident that led to Goose's demise. In the film Flight of the Intruder, Willem Dafoe played LCDR Virgil Tiger Cole, who served as an A6B N bombardier navigator with his pilot LT Jake Cool Hand Grafton, played by Brad Johnson. In the film Behind Enemy Lines, Owen Wilson played LT Chris Burnett, a weapon systems officer in an F.A-18F Super Hornet. See also Naval Aviator Insignia United States Marine Corps Aviation List of United States Navy Aircraft Squadrons List of United States Marine Corps Aircraft Squadrons NATOPS Notes <laughs>